Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Eric Morrison. This is 7 out of 3, and I'll be covering trading education, more specifically Forex swing trading, using the TC2000 platform. Hello everyone, this is the Week in Review for the 21 Forex Currencies Part 1 Targets. And I want to start with the Aussie Dollar Canadian Dollar. And if you look at here at this bend here at the Z3, three standard deviations away from the entire price action movement, you have a bend here, or a V, or what they call a Z3 excursion, right? So you have statistical significance at this price level, at this price juncture. And what I want you to look at is is what does price do at that particular point? It sh shows up as significant resistance. So that's why I use these points at the Z3, both on the shorts and the longs, that price will stall. Price will may even go in the other direction at this point. And here it did. It wanted to do it before tested and before it went back up again. The next Z3, when you shrink this, looks like there's a another target here forming at this level. So when we set up our weekly highs and lows for each currency pair for weekly high and low we look at where these bends are and these bends will show us a particular target like for last week this was a good target for this this week and it hit that price target and it just it kept hanging around uh, that particular point or of resistance so now now in addition to stops that we can do you know here at the belly of dragon or using the dragon as stops we can also analyze our targets so that was the Aussie dollar Canadian dollar Well, the Aussie dollar Swiss franc Z3 was right here and look how close it is to the price action to the actual high and low here at at this particular point I mean if you look it almost hits right there as a measure of resistance before it gets up here to this this level and if you look here there's another bend and right near the 200 you may think it could have been the 200 moving average but look this Z3 dip here at this high point showed where price went to and then retrace back. So these are significant areas that I use as targets for each of the currency pairs. Aussie dollar Japanese yen, <clears throat> same thing. Look at the dip. Now we have another, we had another dip here and another dip here. Look, right here at this major dip, look what price did. It stalled right at that Z3 dip here. And if you look, another one here, almost to the price, right, where price stalled, right, right to this mini dip here. So the maybe the size of the excursion has some significant resistance for price act but we can use these price points for targets when we were looking at either longs or shorts so here would be a price target for a short if we would decide to go short Aussie dollar New Zealand dollar no trade Aussie dollar US dollar look here right at this bend of the Z3 price stopped exactly at that for three days in a row pretty significant this stopped here stopped here stopped here tried to go up and then went back down and then used it as support once it broke through that Z3 bend right there. So the, so we now know what the significance of these outer bands of the Z3 have on price. And we can look and anticipate a particular point on there, like this this point right here, as a potential target for resistance. And that, that's right on that's right on the, the week's price point. So if it breaks through there, we can set the price point here at the Z3. Canadian dollar Swiss franc, same thing. Look, hit right at the target. I think I, I had it expanded like this, so I didn't see this one over here. Um, but when we look for price targets, this this could have been a price target, this could have been a price target, and look right at price where it stopped, where it stalled. Very interesting phenomenon when we set targets. So we have our stops to help us address our fear, right, of a loss. But we also have our targets here to address greed. Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, same thing. Price went to the Z3 here at this bend, and then retrace back so a significant area for this but it makes it allows us to hit our targets when we get this price in so we uh, you know hat tip to Kim basically saying that we trap these these trades in a particular zone and and be able to you know benefit from these trades in one direction or the other with our targets same here look right here with the Swiss franc Japanese yen price stopped right at the band it ended on Friday right at the band and then with this Z3 
three, that was our target right there. So all we do is we look uh, look at what the the top band is at 112, 171, and it stopped right there. It closed right there. So that was a great trade. It was a great target for this. Your Aussie dollar uh, did not hit our, our our target on the short. That's okay. We have our stops in there and our our procedures to put place our stops in order to protect our profit. So we we address that fear. Euro Canadian dollar. Uh, the target was way up here. It ended up on Friday, um, but again, didn't go down to hit our stop at this Z3, but we protected our profit in this location. We went into thir three trades, or three orders, three positions, and came back, stopped out, and we waited for this trade, and then we were able to save what we had here uh, for the closeout to gain, uh, protect our profit. Euro Swiss franc, again, uses Z3. And look, almost right at where the price stopped at. You know, so this this technique is is good for us to to look at you know where do we place our targets both on longs and shorts so right here for this trade this trade goes up get that profit in you got another target <coughs> um, and so next week's target look it hit it right there boom right at that z3 and then came back down so we can use a z3 to help place our targets for each of our trade you know japanese yen look at that right at that bend right so right at that bend you had the 200 moving day average but it's the z3 that trumps the 200 moving day average in terms of price movement. This is where it gravitates to, but this is where price respects. And look, it closed right at Z3. Very interesting phenomenon that everybody should take into consideration when placing your targets. Z3 targets uh, right here didn't hit our target, but again, we protected our trade. Z3 hit our Z3 right here. Bounce went up, bounce, uh, and then hit another Z3 at this point. So why don't you just stay in the trader? I think, I think once you control your greed with the Z3, it is is a perfect opportunity to do that. You can get into trades next week. Uh, there are plenty of opportunities, as you can see, across all the 21 Forex currencies in which the big banks kind of move and shuffle around to see what they can are the best opportunities for them. And so what we want to do is ride the momentum to these Z3s. It looks like a lot of big banks, central banks, and hedge fund managers, along with a lot of algorithms, cash out at the Z3 or the Z3 excursion. It's part of their calculations. So this is something that we need to consider as retail traders. Here, it didn't hit our uh, our Z3 area. Right there. Didn't hit it, but we went ahead, tried to protect it, didn't protect it, and we had two losses on this. But if you look here, last week, hit the Z3 as support. Look at that. Hit it right directly on the Z3. Interesting price point for all retail traders to take into consideration for target. So as we were making money on this short, we have to take into consideration one price would pop potentially stop and this z3 should be your end goal for your trading New zealand swiss franc same thing price hits our target and then it kind of bounces around it you know even even to the same point where the z3 was at so there was significant influence of the z3 same thing with this bend same thing with this bend uh this swing high this swing high this swing high all of it falls around this bend in the z3 so a lot of folks ask you know what what are the charts telling you oh they show a pretty good position where stops and targets can be placed at. Zealand Japanese yen, same thing. Look, right at that Z3, price hits it right there in that same location. And we have this bend here to give us a good potential target. You look right here, hits our target on Friday, no, on Thursday, last Thursday, hits our target from last week right at that Z3 bend. And so when we go into a long position, we have the next gap up. The gap up is the next bend in the Z3 as a potential target. Zealand US dollar, look at the price ends right at the Z3. I mean, very significant in terms of this bend and this curve. Statistical charting matters. We have regression lines and statistical re regression lines. We have uh, standard deviations from the mean, both at the 1, 2, and 3 level. So the Z3 that I keep mentioning here has a significant impact on price. Same thing with the, the Canadian dollar, or U.S. Canadian dollar. Look at this. It's our price point at this Z3 that we our target. It almost closes right at this bend right here. Amazing. Right, so when we look at where price would potentially stall or where a good price target is, always consider this dash line as a potential target. U.S. dollar, Swiss franc, same thing. Hits on the last day of the trading day, hits the Z3 and hits our target. U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, there was no trade. So, folks, this is part one of the week in review for the week of the 24th of May, ending on the 30th of May, trading week. And I wanted to emphasize during part one the use of targets and what, how do I go about picking targets? Part two, I will talk.
talk about a new way of looking at price movement along with the season. Remember, ruthless risk management. Have a great weekend, everyone. Well, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button below and the subscribe button. And if you want more information on TC2000, I have an affiliate link below. If you open up a TC2000 account, you will receive a $25 discount using that link. Thank you for your time.